Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So today we're going to be doing the spray painting stage on this grey Honda Civic. The colour code is NH797M and the name of the colour is Modern Steel Metallic as you see there on screen. So obviously all the prep work and masking has already been done. We're just going to be focusing on the spray painting stage today. This one here was just an afterthought. I thought, you know what, I haven't done a video on a job like this for a while, so I thought, hey, I'll grab the GoPro and do some recording. So here we are. As I say, prep work and masking has all been done. I'll actually be including some prep work and masking in some of the coming videos, so hang around for them. But as I say, for this one here, it's just a spray painting stage. Um, now you may notice there's some multicolored primers on that quarter panel there. And that was because the repair wasn't that great, but uh, UV primer came to save the day again. And yeah, it's really amazing stuff. And that's actually another video that I'm gonna be doing soon. I've had some new UV primer and body fillers and lights come in recently, and I'm pretty impressed with them. So as I say, I'll, I'll be doing a, a review and demonstration on some of those products. But the paint I'm using is PPG Enviro Base, and what you saw me spray down first was actually some um, clear base coat. So it's just like transparent base coat, as you may have noticed on the screen. It's called T490, and I just leave that in one of my guns. Now, actually, the PPG reps and many people say that you don't need it with this system, but I've just found you're better off with it. Yeah, like the way that I prep cars up, I like to do my orbital sanding first, and then I like to use the um, 1000 grit grippy pads, the 3M ones, and I've found that if I don't use that base coat blender, sometimes you can get a couple of little sanding scratches, so like the way that they would tell you to do it, like the PPG guys will tell you to do it, is that they will say, sand your edges first and then use your orbital because like the, the orbital sander has like very small uh, sanding scratches, like really nice tight orbital sanding scratches rather than hand sanding can, can sort of tend to dig in. Um, but I've found that when I do it that way, I end up just double sanding stuff. So big, like I like to do the orbital first, so I know where I can sand with the orbital and I'll just pick up all the edges by hand. But as I say, what that can lead to is some deeper, slightly deeper sanding scratches. So if you don't use that base coat blender, you can end up having some sanding scratches in the finish. So as I say, simple fix to that is just put a coat of that base coat blender down before I start putting my base coat down. Um, and as I said before, I'm using the PPG Enviro base base coat. So I've found this is the best way to spray it. So as I said before, we'll put our base coat blender down first, only on the metallic, like the light metallics. This is, as I say, uh, probably a borderline one, may not have actually needed it, even with the way that I prep. But all that aside, after I've got the base coat blender down, I just go for coverage just over the repaired areas. So I'll start my spray gun settings at full fluid and 25 PSI for the first coat. Just get it nice and covered on that first coat, just over the areas that need coverage. Um, and sort of 80%, I'm going for 80% on my first coat. Um, and the second coat, I'll wind the fluid in by half a turn. I'll then drop the pressure by five PSI. Do a half a turn in on the fluid with 20 PSI, and then I'll start doing the blend, and I'll also go over the repaired areas again as well. And then uh, the third and any further coats, so if I, if, for whatever reason it wasn't covered or for whatever reason the blend wasn't quite right I would leave it at the settings for the third coat the settings for the third coat is winded in another half a turn with the fluid and drop it by another five psi so if I didn't confuse the hell out of you there you're doing pretty well but um, yeah otherwise I guess you can hit pause on those on-screen instructions and hopefully you can make a bit better sense out of it um, I hope you've been enjoying the text title layers. I upgraded my video editing software recently. That's actually part of the reason I'm making this video now. I want to get some videos uh, done so that I can put some awesome titles in them. But all that aside, we're doing the clear coat stage now. And the clear coat I'm using is the PPG LVC 105 clear coat. It's one of the new generation clears. I'm actually a big fan of them. Um, yeah, so they're, they're quite different than the, the normal clear coats, than the, the clears that well, I've used for most of my career. Um, it's actually quite similar to the Standox Performance Pro Clear, 
Um, I kind of struggled with this clear the well the first time I used it it was actually fine but then after that I did struggle with it a little bit I, I got a couple of big hanging runs with it and it just wasn't working too well now um, to be honest it's actually like a Melbourne winter it was a Melbourne winter when I was using it and as it turns out I was using the wrong reducer I didn't actually realize they had a fast reducer so what I did was I read the uh, technical data sheet and then I found out that they did have a fast reducer and then I found an old um, uh, bottle of reducer sitting out the back and I've started using that ever since I did that and also changed the way I spray it a little bit. Um, I've been having much improved results. So yeah, very important I say anyway, especially in the colder weather to use the fast reducer in the 105. Um, but also I really need to get that first coat down as skinny as possible. And that's why I totally changed up the settings and even the air cap that I'm using on my gun so I ended up putting the 110 air cap on. So this is a GTI Pro Light for those of you who don't know. And yeah, I put the 110 air cap on because what I've found that it gets like a slightly finer atomization. It gets like a little bit less material than the TE20 on. So what I ended up doing is cranking the pressure right up to like 35, even 40 PSI. I've found that 40 PSI even works on your first coat. So that's as I say before, the intention of that is to get that first coat down as skinny as possible because as I said before this clear is actually quite different than most clears so if you're using the slow reducer it'll just stay wet forever like you'll put a coat down you go out clean your gun out and it will just be as wet as but then once you hit bake on it like you give it 20 to 25 minute bake and it will be hard as a rock and I mean as as hard as like one month cured normal two pack clear coat so you could like roll it out of the booth cool it down and start doing your d nib straight away but look as i say it was just a really shorter video here i actually didn't even get any footage of this uh car when it was finished and outside and washed up so we're just going to have to leave it at that for this video i hope you guys did enjoy this short one um, if you like the shorter format, tell me. I might be able to start uploading some more short videos. But until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Coming out. Oh, and we've got some more merch coming soon. So be sure to check that link in the description. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favorite is those spray suits. So they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it there's also hats drink coolers hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested <laughs>